Welcome back to Retro Peace Theater, guys. We are now climbing up Death Mountain. We're going to go see the Great Fairy. And we're going to drop a bomb there. And we're going to attempt to blow up that one across the way. Oh. Timing was off. Almost. Come on. There we go. Come on. That was a waste of 20 rupees, but, you know, whatever. And if you hear the sound of a cow right now, it's because inside of the hole underneath this rock is a cow. And if we play Zelda's lullaby next to a cow, we can get milk. Assuming we have an empty jar. There's also hearts. Alright. How the cow got here, nobody knows. Well, that was a terrible time. Oh, right here, I believe I am safe. And uh, if I can make it to the top here, I know the beeping noise is annoying, I am sorry, but I don't feel like wasting a fairy. If I can make it to the top, there's a fairy fountain up here, and I'll get full health. So I'll just keep talking to avoid you focusing on the dreaded beeping sound pounding in my ears. The telltale heart, if you will. You like that? I hope you like that. Here we go. We're gonna blow this open. And inside is a fairy fountain. This isn't a regular fairy fountain. You saw a regular fairy fountain a couple episodes ago. This is the Great Fairy's Fountain. And if we stand on the Triforce and play Zelda's Lullaby, the magical tune of Hyrule, we are greeted by a rather buxom and attractive Great Fairy. This is also the first time that we see the Great Fairy given 3D form. Uh, in all of the others, she just looked like a bigger version of a fairy. Uh, up until this point. Which now, looking at these graphics 20-some years later, she's actually quite frightening. So she's going to give us the first of our magic powers, which is a super sword slash. And I'm actually going to go get one more magic power after this um, before we go to the third um, water dungeon to get the... well, the third dungeon is a dungeon of water, and, which is in Dor Zora's domain, and before we go through all that, I'm going to go get one more. So here we go. And that's where we're heading next. We're going by Hyrule Castle. Alright. Now we have full hearts and a magic meter. And this is our sword slash. And supercharged. Very useful. And magic's extremely easy to come by. You'll find magic jars, chopping grass, and such. Now, if we talk to Mr. Owl, Mr. Owl will give us a ride. Hope we don't get motion sick.
Nice view. And he drops us on a roof. Now, if we come over here, and we drop down here, and we go in here. This is the only way to get to this room, by the way, is to ride the owl down. You get a piece of heart. Okay. All right, well, that sums up everything we're going to do here in Kakariko Village for right now. But don't worry. We'll be back. And as you can see, all the cuckoos have gotten loose again. So now we're going to go over by Hyrule Castle, and it won't matter whether it's day or night for this. Um, we're kind of past the bulk of when the day-night cycle is important. At least as far as I can think we are anyway. But the song of the sun song is still really useful because um, you know if you don't feel like fighting monsters at night it's an easy way to just not deal with them. There's some games here in the market that we can play. Um, That'll increase different things, get a bigger wallet and such, but right now we're going to go ahead and give money to this guy since we have it and uh, pay him back for his mask. And blah, 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 blah. I didn't mean to talk to you about things. So this is the next mask. Um, we're going to go ahead and grab it because I know who it goes to. We'll just have to do that in a bit. Not right now. Right now, we need to go this way. And like before, we need to climb up this vine because the next fairy we need to go see is over here. And we couldn't go here earlier because we didn't have bombs. So we got a sword technique and now we have a magic spell. And what she's giving us is called Den's Fire. And if you remember the legend, Den was one of the three goddesses. That helped establish the Triforce. So now we have Den's Fire. So technically with Den's Fire, you don't have to have any more Deku Sticks for the sake of lighting torches, even though the Deku Stick, in most cases for doing that, is easier. Um, you know, you don't have to. You can use Den's Fire, which lets you conjure fire from anywhere. And now I think we're going to head to Zora's Domain. There's a couple fun things we can do there. 
But just like all the other dungeons, there's a series of things we need to complete before we can get actually to the third dungeon. And in the first couple Zelda games, I believe the Zoras were actually bad guys. Um, in the very first Zelda game, they were the ones that popped out of the water and would shoot at you. Uh, in this, the Zoras are actually your friend, which is kind of neat. Now, Zora's Domain is actually this way. Follow the water upstream. The Zoras are a fish mermaid-like people. Just because I don't feel like doing with nighttime monsters at the moment. And she's going to mention something about the water. Oh, she wants me to call Saria and ask her, but if I call Saria, she's just going to tell me to go here anyway. So, kind of moot. Like I said, if you once you actually know how to play the game, Navi is extremely annoying. Okay, and there's our owl friend, yet again. Magic jar. gotten bigger and stronger in just a couple days. Okay. I also like the way the game um makes you do things in order, the way they go about it. Because there are different ways you can go about it. And side note, this guy here, he eats he has magic beans that he's currently chewing on. And if you plant them in this soft soil, later on in the game, as time passes, they will be able to grow into plants you can ride and get access to different areas. Um and I just made a terrible mistake. Okay. Miss time my jump. Uh, but it's just one of those extra things you can do. I'm not really going to worry about it too much right now. Um, oh, that's right. I need the chicken. Come here. And now I don't need the chicken anymore. I say that, and then I completely mess up a jump. And now, I have to leave and come back. Wonderful. This is what I get for trying to sound like I know what I'm doing. <sighs> I swear, I do know how to play this game. <laughs> I know, you're gonna make, you're gonna talk to me all over again. We'll just hang on to the chicken for now. Now, if it goes nighttime in this area, nothing really changes except there's some gold sculptures that will show up that you might not see otherwise. Um, I don't know if I can get to that. I don't think I can. Oh, hey, there we go. Peace heart.
And now we approach Zora's domain. Or we're kind of in Zora's domain already. This is blank. The entry part to Zora's domain. So, there. This is also a way to the Lost Woods if you dive down. And this is how we get into the main part of Zora's domain. Simple as that. Now, I am going to need to use one of my fairies because I do need a bottle. Because I need to get a fish. I love the music inside here. It sounds so peaceful. And the water effect that they have, the lighting effect on the walls, just really stands out to me against, you know, what you know, the 64 was capable of and what they were trying to do. This is their shop. Um, so these fish here, we're going to get one. I'm going to use a fairy real quick, even though I don't need to. I do need an empty bottle. Oh, waste of a fairy. It's okay. Got him. Okay. And I do need my Deku sticks, because we are going to light some torches. Now, this is actually pretty tricky to do, because you have to go pretty far to uh, be able to do this. And the Deku sticks do burn up. So you can't really afford to waste steps. There we go. Uh, gotta get back behind here and get that one and that one. There we go. Heart. Now, there's one more thing I gotta do before I can. Well, two things. So I need to get the silver Zora scale, and then I need to get um, a letter from the princess. But I'll come back to that first. The Zora scale. And what the Zora scale will do is it will allow me to dive underwater for a longer period of time. And we get that by going this way. And talking to this dude. So it's a diving game. So he's going to throw a bunch of rupees in the water. Now you get to keep them, but you got to get as many as you can. And wonderful swan dive right off the top. And if you kind of use your shadow to gauge in the water where you're going to dive, it's a little easier. You really have plenty of time, and so it's actually better with this to kind of take your time, line up where you're going to go before you do it. Now I just have to go back up there. Okay. Now with the silver scale, we can dive back into the water. 
and where we need to go is Lake Hylia, which we previously couldn't get to, and up to this point in the game you can only get to through Zora's Domain. You can do that by going through here. And now we are at Lake Hylia. And the whole thing we need to do here is... let me find it. There is a bottle right there. And we're going to go for it. So something's already inside this bottle, and we get to keep the bottle, so this is our third bottle. There's actually four total in the game. Um, I usually only get three, because that's really all you need to get um, to do a casual playthrough. Maybe I'll get the fourth. I haven't decided yet. Anyway, so now we have this, and it's actually a letter from Princess Rudo. And we have to give this to the king. And now for the longest cutscene in the game. That was exhilarating. I'm so glad they took the time to animate all of that. Okay, we're gonna need the fish. Now I'm not gonna go through Jabu Jabu on this playthrough. In fact, I'm gonna make this playthrough just a little bit shorter. Um, but there is something else that I want to do while I'm here. So this giant whale fish thing over here is their guardian god, Jabu Jabu. We're going to go inside Jabu Jabu, but not just yet. First, I'm going to swim back here. Didn't get it closer. There we go. And just like that, giant open. Giant opening. And another great fairy fountain. And here we're going to get another spell. And this is actually not a spell I use. I'm just getting it because I'm here and I can. And it's not that it's an un... It's not that it's a, a useless spell. It's not at all. It's just not one I've ever really made use of too much. I haven't needed to. Um. <laughs> this is Pharaoh's Wind. Pharaoh's Wind, short version, if you cast it at really anywhere, if you're in a dungeon and you cast Pharaoh's Wind, and then you go through um, the dungeon, if you cast Pharaoh's Wind again, it'll warp you back to the point where you initially cast it, which can be useful, um, but if you leave a dungeon, 
um, the warp point will automatically go away. So I'm going to go inside Lord Jabu Jabu for the third and final dungeon um, before we go to the Temple of Time. And uh, yeah, let's do this. So I need the fish. What we do? He doesn't talk. We just drop a fish. He will do the rest. He kind of looks like a giant hippopotamus to me. Like, less fish, more giant hippo. Okay. Alright, and this is where we're going to end our playthrough for today. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying so far. Uh, we're going to complete this, and then after that, we're going to go to the Temple of Time. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.